Our Lady of Fatima Portuguese, Nossa Senhora de Fatima, formerly known as Our Lady of the Holy Rosary of Fatima, European Portuguese, NSO de Fatim Brazilian Portuguese, NC de Fatim, is a Catholic title of the Blessed Virgin Mary based on the famed Marian apparitions reported in 1917 by three shepherd children at the Cova da Iria, in Fatima, Portugal. The three children were Lucia dos Santos and her cousins Francisco and Jacinta Marto. Bishop José Alves Cojea da Silva declared the events worthy of belief on 13 October 1930. On 13 May 1946, Pope Pius XII granted a canonical coronation to the venerated image enshrined at the Chapel of the Apparitions of Fatima via his apostolic legate, Cardinal Benedetto Aloisi Masella. On the 11th of November 1954, the same pontiff raised the Sanctuary of Fatima to the status of minor basilica by his papal brief Lucre Superna. The published memoirs of Lucia dos Santos in the 1930s revealed two secrets that she claimed came from the Virgin while the third secret was to be revealed by the Catholic Church in 1960. The controversial events at Fatima gained fame due partly to elements of the secrets, prophecy and eschatological revelations allegedly related to the Second World War and possibly more global wars in the future, particularly the Virgin's alleged request for the consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. History Prelude In the spring and summer of 1916, nine-year-old Lucia dos Santos and her cousins Francisco and Jacinta Marto were herding sheep at the Cova da Iria near their home village of Aljustral in the parish of Fatima, Portugal. They later said they were visited three times by an apparition of an angel. They said the angel, who identified himself as the Angel of Peace and Guardian Angel of Portugal, taught them prayers, to make sacrifices, and to spend time in adoration of the Lord. Topic. Marian apparitions Beginning in the spring of 1917, the children reported apparitions of an angel, and starting in May 1917, apparitions of the Virgin Mary, who the children described as, the lady more brilliant than the sun. The children reported a prophecy that prayer would lead to an end to the Great War, and that on 13 October that year the lady would reveal her identity and perform a miracle, so that all may believe. Newspapers reported the prophecies, and many pilgrims began visiting the area. The children's accounts were deeply controversial, drawing intense criticism from both local secular and religious authorities. A provincial administrator briefly took the children into custody, believing the prophecies were politically motivated in opposition to the officially secular First Portuguese Republic established in 1910. The events of 13 October became known as the Miracle of the Sun. On 13 May 1917, the children reported seeing a woman, "...brighter than the sun, shedding rays of light clearer and stronger than a crystal goblet filled with the most sparkling water and pierced by the burning rays of the sun." The woman wore a white mantle edged with gold and held a rosary in her hand. She asked them to devote themselves to the Holy Trinity and to pray, "...the rosary every day, to bring peace to the world and an end to the war." While the children had never told anyone about seeing the angel, Jacinta told her family about seeing the brightly lit woman. Lucia had earlier said that the three should keep this experience private. Jacinta's disbelieving mother told neighbors about it as a joke, and within a day the whole village knew of the children's vision. The children said the woman told them to return to the Cova da Iria on 13 June 1917. Lucia's mother sought counsel from the parish priest, Father Ferreira, who suggested she allow them to go. He asked to have Lucia brought to him afterward so that he could question her. The second appearance occurred on 13 June, the feast of St. Anthony, patron of the local parish church. On this occasion the lady revealed that Francisco and Jacinta would be taken to heaven soon, but Lucia would live longer in order to spread her message and devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. During the June visit, the children said the lady told them to say the Holy Rosary daily in honor of Our Lady of the Rosary to obtain peace and the end of the Great War. Three weeks earlier, on 21 April, the first contingent of Portuguese soldiers had embarked for the front lines of the war. The lady also purportedly revealed to the children a vision of hell, and entrusted a secret secret to them, described as, "...good for some and bad for others." Fr. Ferreira later stated that Lucia recounted that the lady told her, 
I want you to come back on the 13th and to learn to read in order to understand what I want of you. I don't want more. In the following months, thousands of people flocked to Fatima and nearby Aljustral, drawn by reports of visions and miracles. On 13 August 1917, the provincial administrator Artur Santos no relation to Lucia dos Santos intervened, as he believed that these events were politically disruptive in the conservative country. He took the children into custody, jailing them before they could reach the Cova da Iria. Santos interrogated and threatened the children to get them to divulge the contents of the secrets. Lucia's mother hoped the officials could persuade the children to end the affair and admit that they had lied. Lucia told Santos everything short of the secrets, and offered to ask the woman for permission to tell the official the secrets. That month, instead of the usual apparition in the Cova da Iria on 13 August, the children reported that they saw the Virgin Mary on 19 August, a Sunday, at nearby Valinos. She asked them again to pray the rosary daily, spoke about the miracle coming in October, and asked them to pray a lot, a lot for the sinners and sacrifice a lot, as many souls perish in hell because nobody is praying or making sacrifices for them." The three children claimed to have seen the Blessed Virgin Mary in a total of six apparitions between 13 May and 13 October 1917. 2017 marked the 100th anniversary of the apparitions. <laughs> Miracle of the Sun After some newspapers reported that the Virgin Mary had promised a miracle for the last of her apparitions on 13 October, a huge crowd, possibly between 30,000 and 100,000, including reporters and photographers, gathered at Cova da Iria. What happened then became known as the Miracle of the Sun. Various claims have been made as to what actually happened during the event. The three children who originally claimed to have seen Our Lady of Fatima reported seeing a panorama of visions during the event, including those of Jesus, Our Lady of Sorrows, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, and of Saint Joseph blessing the people. Father John de Marchi, an Italian Catholic priest and researcher wrote several books on the subject, which included descriptions by witnesses who believed they had seen a miracle created by Mary, Mother of God. According to accounts, after a period of rain, the dark clouds broke and the sun appeared as an opaque, spinning disk in the sky. It was said to be significantly duller than normal, and to cast multicolored lights across the landscape, the people, and the surrounding clouds. The sun was then reported to have careened towards the earth before zigzagging back to its normal position. Witnesses reported that their previously wet clothes became suddenly and completely dry, as well as the wet and muddy ground that had been previously soaked because of the rain that had been falling." Not all witnesses reported seeing the sun dance. Some people only saw the radiant colors, and others, including some believers, saw nothing at all. The only known picture of the sun taken during the event does not show anything unusual. No unusual phenomenon of the sun was observed by scientists at the time. A number of theologians, scientists, and skeptics have offered alternative explanations that include psychological suggestibility of the witnesses, temporary retinal distortion caused by staring at the intense light of the sun, and optical effects caused by natural meteorological phenomena. <laughs> Later years of the children Francisco and Jacinta Mardo died in the international flu pandemic that began in 1918 and swept the world. Francisco Mardo died at home on 4 April 1919, at the age of 10. Jacinta died at the age of 9 in hospital on 20 February 1920. They are buried at the Sanctuary of Fatima. They were beatified by Pope John Paul II on 13 May 2000 and canonized by Pope Francis on 13 May 2017. Their mother Olympia Mardo said that her children predicted their deaths many times to her and to curious pilgrims in the brief period of time after the Marian apparitions. At the age of 14, Lucia was sent to the school of the Sisters of St. Dorothy Dorothean in Villar, a suburb of Porto, Portugal. In 1928 she became a postulant at the convent of the Sisters of St. Dorothy in Tui, Spain, near the border with Portugal. Lucia continued to report private visions periodically throughout her life. She reported seeing the Virgin Mary again in 1925 in the convent. This time she said she was asked to convey the message of the first Saturday's devotion. She said that a subsequent vision of Christ as a child reiterated this request. 
In 1929, Lucia reported that Mary returned and repeated her request for the consecration of Russia to her Immaculate Heart. She also reported an apparition in Riangso, Galicia, in 1931, in which she said that Jesus visited her, taught her two prayers, and delivered a message to give to the church's hierarchy. In 1936 and again in 1941, Sister Lucia said that the Virgin Mary had predicted the deaths of her two friends during the second apparition on 13 June 1917. According to Lucia's 1941 account, on 13 June, Lucia asked the Virgin if the three children would go to heaven when they died. She said that she heard Mary reply, Yes, I shall take Francisco and Jacinta soon, but you will remain a little longer, since Jesus wishes you to make me known and loved on earth. He wishes also for you to establish devotion in the world to my Immaculate Heart. In 1947, Sister Lucia left the Dorothean Order. She joined the Discalced Carmelite Order in a monastery in Coimbra, Portugal. Lucia died on 13 February 2005, at the age of 97. Topic. Pilgrimage The widely reported miracle of the sun contributed to Fatima quickly becoming a major center of pilgrimage. Two million pilgrims visited the site in the decade following the events of 1917. A small chapel, the Capelina, was built by local people on the site of the apparitions. The construction was neither encouraged nor hindered by the Catholic Church authorities. On 13 May 1920, pilgrims defied government troops to install a statue of the Virgin Mary in the chapel. The Holy Sacrifice of the Mass was first officially celebrated there in January 1924. A hostel for the sick was begun in that year. In 1927 the first rector of the sanctuary was appointed, and a set of stations of the cross were erected on the mountain road. The foundation stone for the present basilica was laid the next year. In 1930, the Catholic Church officially recognized the apparition events as worthy of belief and granted a papal indulgence to pilgrims visiting Fatima. In 1935, the bodies of the child visionaries, Francisco and Jacinta, were reinterred in the basilica. Pope Pius XII granted a canonical coronation of the statue of Our Lady of Fatima on 13 May 1946. This event drew such large crowds that the entrance to the site had to be barred. In the 21st century, pilgrimage to the site takes place year round. Additional chapels, hospitals, and other facilities have been constructed at the site. The principal pilgrimage festivals take place on the 13th day of each month, from May to October, on the anniversaries of the original apparitions. The largest crowds gather on 13 May and 13 October, when up to a million pilgrims have attended to pray and witness processions of the statue of Our Lady of Fatima, both during the day and by the light of tens of thousands of candles at night. <laughs> <laughs> Official position of the Catholic Church The reported visions at Fatima gathered widespread attention, as numerous pilgrims began to visit the site. After a canonical inquiry, the Bishop of Lyria Fatima officially declared the visions of Fatima as worthy of belief in October 1930, officially permitting the belief of Our Lady of Fatima. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Political aspects. At the time of the apparitions, Portugal was undergoing tensions between the secularizing republican government and more conservative elements in society. The First Republic had begun with the Revolution of 1910 overthrowing the constitutional monarch. It was intensely anticlerical and provoked a strong conservative reaction, ultimately leading to the military coup of 1926. Later in Spain during the 1920s and 1930s, as the forces of the Republic gathered strength, armies of the faithful carried the Virgin Mary against groups they said were godless. During the Spanish Second Republic, apparitions of the Virgin Mary were seen on Spanish soil at Esquioga. Ramona Elizabeth said that Mary had marked the palms of her hands with a sword. Sears gained much credence in integrist and Carlist circles. The visions at Esquioga were widely covered in the press, as were 16 other visitations of the Virgin reported in 1931 in Spain. Conservative elements in the Spanish Church actively encouraged the Fatima devotion as a way of countering the perceived threat of atheistic communism. In Portugal and its former colony of Brazil, conservative groups were sometimes associated with the cult of Fatima. 
When Germany invaded Russia in 1941, some Catholics interpreted this in terms of the Fatima apparitions, and believed that the Virgin's prophecy was about to be fulfilled. The original apparitions took place during the six months preceding the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia, and supposedly the lady talked to the children about the need to pray for Russia. Lucia admitted later that the children initially thought she was requesting prayers for a girl named Russia. In the first edition of Sister Lucia's memoirs, published after the outbreak of WW2, she focused on the issue of Russia. The warning by the lady that, if Russia was not consecrated, it would spread its errors throughout the world, was often seized upon as an anti-communist rallying cry. The Blue Army of Our Lady of Fatima, for instance, has always been strongly anti-communist and its members often associated the Fatima story in the context of the Cold War. The Blue Army is made up of Catholics who believe that by dedicating themselves to daily prayer specifically, of the Rosary, they can help to achieve world peace and put an end to the error of communism. Organizations such as the Blue Army have gained the approval of the Catholic Church. Memoirs of Sister Lucia The Fatima story developed in two parts, that which was reported in 1917, and information later mentioned in Sister Lucia's memoirs which she wrote years later, after the Church ruled that the events in Fatima were "...worthy of belief." Her memoir was not subject to the same scrutiny. The early messages focused on the need to pray the Rosary for peace and an end to World War I. The supernatural events in Fatima were not widely known outside Portugal and Spain until Lucia published her memoirs, starting in the late 1930s. Between 1935 and 1993, she wrote six memoirs. The first four, written between 1935 and 1941 during World War II, are now published under the title Fatima in Lucia's own words. The fifth and sixth memoirs, written in 1989 and 1993, are published as Fatima in Lucia's own words too. In the mid-1930s the Bishop of Lyria encouraged Lucia at that time named Sister Maria Lucia das Dors to write her memoirs, so that she might reveal further details of the 1917 apparitions. In her first memoir, published in 1935, focused on the holiness of Jacinta Marto. The deceased girl was by then popularly considered a saint. In her second memoir, published in 1937, Lucia wrote more about her own life, the apparition of 13 June 1917, and first reveals the earlier apparitions of the Angel of Peace. Topic. Three Secrets of Fatima In her third memoir of 1941, Sister Lucia described three secrets. She said these had been entrusted to the children during the apparition of 13 July 1917. Topic. First secret This was a vision of hell, which Lucia said they experienced on 13 July 1917. Topic. Second secret This was a recommendation for devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary as a way to save souls and bring peace to the world. It predicted an end to the Great War, but predicted a worse one if people did not cease offending God. This second war would be presaged by a night illuminated by an unknown light, as a great sign that the time of chastisement was near. To avert this, Mary would return to ask for the consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart, and the establishment of the first Saturday's devotion. If her requests were heeded, Russia would be converted, and there would be peace. If not, Russia would spread her errors throughout the world, causing wars and persecutions of the Church. It ended with a promise that in the end, the Immaculate Heart would triumph. The Holy Father would consecrate Russia to Mary, and a period of peace would be granted to the world. On 25 January 1938, during solar cycle 17, bright lights, an aurora borealis appeared over the northern hemisphere, including in places as far south as North Africa, Bermuda and California. It was the widest occurrence of the aurora since 1709 and people in Paris and elsewhere believed a great fire was burning and notified fire departments. Sister Lucia indicated that it was the sign foretold and so apprised her superior and the bishop in letters the following day. Just over a month later, Hitler seized Austria and eight months later invaded Czechoslovakia. Topic. Consecration of Russia 
According to Sister Lucia, the Virgin Mary promised that the consecration of Russia would lead to Russia's conversion and an era of peace. At the time the supposed request for the consecration of Russia was made, however, the Bolsheviks had not yet taken control of Russia. Pope Pius XII, in his apostolic letter Sacro Virgin of 7 July 1952, consecrated Russia to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Pius XII wrote, Just as a few years ago we consecrated the entire human race to the Immaculate Heart of the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, so today we consecrate and in a most special manner we entrust all the peoples of Russia to this Immaculate Heart. In 1952 the Pope said to the Russian people and the Stalinist regime that the Virgin Mary was always victorious. The gates of hell will never prevail, where she offers her protection. She is the Good Mother, the Mother of all, and it has never been heard, that those who seek her protection, will not receive it. With this certainty, the Pope dedicates all people of Russia to the Immaculate Heart of the Virgin. She will help. Error and atheism will be overcome with her assistance and divine grace." Popes Pius XII and John Paul II both had a special relationship with Our Lady of Fatima. Pope Benedict XV began Pacelli's church career, elevating him to Archbishop in the Sistine Chapel on 13 May 1917, the date of the first reported apparition. Pius XII was laid to rest in the crypt of St. Peter's Basilica on 13 October 1958, the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima. Pope John Paul II again consecrated the entire world to the Virgin Mary in 1984, without explicitly mentioning Russia. Some believe that Sister Lucia verified that this ceremony fulfilled the requests of the Virgin Mary. However, in the Blue Army's Spanish magazine, Sol de Fatima, in the September 1985 issue, Sister Lucia said that the ceremony did not fulfill the Virgin Mary's request, as there was no specific mention of Russia and many bishops attached no importance to it. In 2001, Archbishop Tarsicio Bertoni met with Sister Lucia, who reportedly told him. I have already said that the consecration desired by Our Lady was made in 1984, and has been accepted in heaven." Sister Lucia died on 13 February 2005, without making any public statement of her own to settle the issue. Some maintain that, according to Lucia and Fatima advocates such as Abbé Georges de Nantes, Fr. Paul Kramer and Nicholas Gruner, Russia has never been specifically consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary by any pope simultaneously with all the world's bishops, which is what Lucia in the 1985 interview had said Mary had asked for. However, by letters of 29 August 1989 and 3 July 1990, she stated that the consecration had been completed, indeed in the 1990 letter in response to a question by the Rev. Father Robert J. Fox, she confirmed, I come to answer your question. If the consecration made by Pope John Paul II on 25 March 1984 in union with all the bishops of the world, accomplished the conditions for the consecration of Russia according to the request of Our Lady in Tui, Spain on 13 June 1929? Yes, it was accomplished, and since then I have said that it was made and I say that no other person responds for me, it is I who receive and open all letters and respond to them. In the meantime, the conception of Theotokos der's Havnaya, Orthodox Christian venerated icon, points out that Virgin Mary is considered actual Tsarina of Russia by the religious appeal of Nicholas II, thus, "...consecration of Russia," may refer to return of Russian monarchy. The icon was brought to Fatima in 2003 and 2014, together with another significant icon, the Theotokos of Port Arthur. Topic. Third Secret The Third Secret, a vision of the death of the Pope and other religious figures, was transcribed by the Bishop of Lyria and reads. After the two parts which I have already explained, at the left of Our Lady and a little above, we saw an angel with a flaming sword in his left hand, flashing, it gave out flames that looked as though they would set the world on fire, but they died out in contact with the splendor that Our Lady radiated towards him from her right hand, pointing to the earth with his right hand, the angel cried out in a loud voice, penance, 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 and we saw in an immense light that is God, something similar to how people appear in a mirror when they pass in front of it a bishop dressed in white we had the impression that it was the Holy Father. 
other bishops, priests, religious men and women going up a steep mountain, at the top of which there was a big cross of rough-hewn trunks as of a cork tree with the bark, before reaching there the Holy Father passed through a big city half in ruins and half trembling with halting step, afflicted with pain and sorrow, he prayed for the souls of the corpses he met on his way, having reached the top of the mountain, on his knees at the foot of the big cross he was killed by a group of soldiers who fired bullets and arrows at him, and in the same way there died one after another the other bishops, priests, religious men and women, and various lay people of different ranks and positions. Beneath the two arms of the cross there were two angels each with a crystal aspersorium in his hand, in which they gathered up the blood of the martyrs and with it sprinkled the souls that were making their way to God. Controversy around the third secret Lucia declared that the third secret could be released to the public after 1960. Some sources, including Canon Barthes and Cardinal Ottaviani, said that Lucia insisted to them it must be released by 1960, saying that, by that time, it will be more clearly understood, and, because the Blessed Virgin wishes it so. Instead, in 1960 the Vatican published an official press release stating that it was most probable the secret would remain, forever, under absolute seal." This announcement triggered widespread speculation. According to the New York Times, speculation over the content of the secret ranged from "...worldwide nuclear annihilation to deep rifts in the Roman Catholic Church that lead to rival papacies." The Vatican did not publish the third secret, a four-page, handwritten text, until 26 June 2000. Such writers as Father Paul Kramer, Christopher Ferrara, Antonio Sochi, and Marco Tosati have suggested that this was not the full text of the secret and stating the third secret is not the full text. They alleged that Cardinals Bertoni, Ratzinger and Sodano concealed the existence of another one-page document, containing information about the apocalypse and a great apostasy. The Vatican has maintained its position that the full text of the third secret was published. According to a December 2001 Vatican press release published in L'Osservatore Romano, Lucia told then Archbishop Bertoni in an interview that the secret had been completely revealed when published, during his apostolic visit to Portugal during 11–14 May 2010 on the 10th anniversary of the beatification of Jacinta and Francisco Marto, Pope Benedict XVI explained to reporters that the interpretation of the third secret did not only refer to the attempted assassination of Pope John Paul II in St. Peter's Square in 19. He said that the third secret has a permanent and ongoing significance, and that its significance could even be extended to include the suffering the Church is going through today as a result of the recent reports of sexual abuse involving the clergy. Topic: <laughs> Fatima prayers and reparations. Many Roman Catholics recite prayers based on Our Lady of Fatima. Lucia later said that, in 1916, she and her cousins had several visions of an angel calling himself the Angel of Portugal and the Angel of Peace, who taught them to bow with their heads to the ground and to say, My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I ask pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope and do not love you. Lucia later set this prayer to music and a recording exists of her singing it. It was also said that sometime later, the angel returned and taught them a Eucharistic devotion now known as the Angel Prayer. Lucia said that the lady emphasized acts of reparation and prayers to console Jesus for the sins of the world. Lucia said that Mary's words were, When you make some sacrifice, say, O oh Jesus, it is for your love, for the conversion of sinners, and in reparation for sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. At the apparition of 13 July 1917, Lucia said Mary told the children that sinners could be saved from damnation by devotion to the Immaculate Heart, but also by making sacrifices. They heard her repeat the idea of sacrifices several times. Her vision of hell prompted them to ever more stringent self-mortifications to save souls. Among many other practices, Lucia wrote that she and her cousins wore tight cords around their waists, flogged themselves with stinging nettles, gave their lunches to beggars, and abstained from drinking water on hot days. Francisco and Jacinta became extremely devoted to this practice. 
Lucia wrote that Mary said God was pleased with their sacrifices and bodily penances. At the first apparition, Lucia wrote, the children were so moved by the radiance that they involuntarily said, Most Holy Trinity, I adore you. My God, my God, I love you in the most blessed sacrament. Lucia also said that she heard Mary ask for the following words to be added to the rosary after the Gloria Patri prayer. O oh my Jesus, pardon us, save us from the fires of hell. Let all souls to heaven, especially those in most need. According to Vatican teaching on the tradition of Marian visitations, references to the conversion of sinners do not necessarily mean religious conversion to the Roman Catholic Church. Pope Leo XIII, in his encyclical on the Unity of the Church, Satis Cognitum, said that would mean the conversion of heretics or apostates who are outside the Church and alien to the Christian faith. Rather, conversion of sinners refers to general repentance and an attempt to amend one's life according to the teachings of Jesus for those true Catholics who are fallen into sins. Lucia wrote that she and her cousins defined sinners not as non-Catholics but as those who had fallen away from the Church or, more specifically, willfully indulged in sinful activity, particularly, "...sins of the flesh," and "...acts of injustice and a lack of charity towards the poor, widows and orphans, the ignorant and the helpless," which she said were even worse than sins of impurity. <laughs> Popes and Fatima The cultus of the Immaculate Heart is the central message of Fatima. Ecclesiastical approbation does not imply that the Church provides an infallible guarantee on the supernatural nature of the event. But, Karl Rahner and other theologians have said that popes, by authoritatively fostering the Marian veneration in places such as Fatima and Lourdes, motivate the faithful into an acceptance of divine faith. In October 1930, Bishop da Silva declared that the apparitions at Fatima were worthy of belief and approved public devotion to the Blessed Virgin under the title Our Lady of Fatima. The Vatican granted indulgences and permitted special liturgies of the Mass to be celebrated in Fatima. In 1939, Eugenio Pacelli, who was consecrated as a bishop on 13 May 1917, the day of the first apparition, was elected to the papacy as Pius XII. He is considered to have become the Pope of Fatima. In 1940 after World War II had started, Sister Lucia asked Pope Pius XII to consecrate the world and Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. She repeated this request later that year on 2 December 1940, stating that in the year 1929, the Blessed Lady requested in another apparition that Russia be consecrated to her Immaculate Heart. Mary was said to promise the conversion of Russia from its errors. On 13 May 1942, the 25th anniversary of the first apparition and the Silver Jubilee of the Episcopal Consecration of Pope Pius XII, the Vatican published the "...message and secret of Fatima." On 31 October 1942, Pope Pius XII, in a radio address to the people of Portugal, discussed the apparitions of Fatima and consecrated the human race to the Immaculate Heart of the Virgin, with specific mention of Russia. See below. On 8 December 1942, the pontiff officially and solemnly declared this consecration in a ceremony in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. On 13 May 1946, Cardinal Masala, the personal delegate of Pius XII, crowned in his name Our Lady of Fatima, as the Pope issued a second message about Fatima. The faithful virgin never disappointed the trust put on her. She will transform into a fountain of graces, physical and spiritual graces, over all of Portugal, and from there, breaking all frontiers, over the whole Church and the entire world. On 1 May 1948, in Auspicia Caedum, Pope Pius XII requested the consecration to the Immaculate Heart of every Catholic family, parish and diocese. It is our wish, consequently, that wherever the opportunity suggests itself, this consecration be made in the various dioceses as well as in each of the parishes and families. On 18 May 1950, the Pope again sent a message to the people of Portugal regarding Fatima. May Portugal never forget the heavenly message of Fatima, which, before anybody else she was blessed to hear. To keep Fatima in your heart and to translate Fatima into deeds, is the best guarantee for ever more graces." In numerous additional messages, and in his encyclicals Fulgens Corona and Ad Caeli Reginum Pius XII encouraged the veneration of the Virgin in Fatima. 
At the end of the Second Vatican Council, Pope Paul VI renewed the consecration of Pius XII to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. In an unusual gesture, he announced his own pilgrimage to the sanctuary on the 50th anniversary of the first apparition. On 13 May 1967, he prayed at the shrine together with Sister Lucia. In the final and historic consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Pope John Paul II on 25 March 1984 consecrated Russia and the world in a public ceremony at St. Peter's in Rome. The consecration was in the form of a whole world consecration carried out in union with the Catholic bishops throughout the world. Cardinal Bertoni said to the press many times that the message of Fatima was finished. Pope John Paul II credited Our Lady of Fatima with saving his life following an assassination attempt on 13 May 1981, the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima. Then on 12 May 1987, he expressed his gratitude to the Virgin Mary for saving his life. The following day, he renewed the consecration of Pius XII to the Immaculate Heart of the Virgin. On 12 to 13 May 2010, Pope Benedict XVI visited the sanctuary of Our Lady of Fatima and strongly stated his acceptance of the supernatural origin of the Fatima apparitions. On the first day, the Pope arrived at the Chapel of Apparitions to pray. He gave a golden rose to Our Lady of Fatima as a homage of gratitude from the Pope for the marvels that the Almighty has worked through you in the hearts of so many who come as pilgrims to this your maternal home." The Pope also recalled the "...invisible hand," that saved John Paul II. He said in a prayer to the Blessed Virgin Mary that it is a profound consolation to know that you are crowned not only with the silver and gold of our joys and hopes, but also with the bullet of our anxieties and sufferings. On the second day, Pope Benedict spoke to more than 500,000 pilgrims. He referred to the Fatima prophecy about the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary and related it to the final glory of the Most Holy Trinity. Pius XII, Paul VI, John Paul II, Benedict XVI, and Pope Francis all voiced their acceptance of the supernatural origin of the Fatima events. Topic: <laughs> Sainthood. In March 2017 the Holy See announced that Pope Francis would canonize two of the visionaries, Francisco and Jacinta Marto, on 13 May at a Mass in Fatima during a two-day visit. The decision followed papal confirmation of a miracle attributed to the intercession of the two visionaries. The Pope solemnly canonized the children on 13 May 2017 during the centennial of the first apparition. Other images of Our Lady of Fatima Several statues of Our Lady of Fatima are notable, among which are the following The Immaculate Heart of Mary, installed above the main façade of the shrine at Fatima. Sister Lucia dos Santos said this most closely resembled her Marian apparitions of 1917. The famed statue carved by José Thedem, now enshrined within the Chapel of Apparitions, was canonically crowned on 13 May 1946 by Pope Pius XII. It was venerated by Pope John Paul II in 1982 who added the bullet from his attempted assassination to the same crown. The International Pilgrim of Fatima, informally known as the Pilgrim Statue, has been taken around the world to Catholic audiences after being blessed on 13 October 1947 by the local Bishop of Liria, Portugal. The so-called UN Virgin Fatima statue, which once stood in the Oratory Chapel of the headquarters of the United Nations in New York City, United States. It was blessed by the Bishop of Liria on 13 October 1952. Our Lady of Fatima is carried in procession as part of the festival of Quilor Riti, held in the highlands of the mountains Sinicara and Colquipunku in Cusco region, Peru. The festival attracts 10,000 pilgrims annually. Since 1984, a statue of Our Lady of Fatima, also known as the International Pilgrim Statue, has been enshrined in the Immaculate Heart of Mary Shrine at the Congregation of the Mother of the Redeemer's Monastery in Carthage, Missouri, United States. The statue is removed once a year during the Marian Days celebration for a procession around Carthage. See also Sanctuary of Our Lady of Fatima Blue Army of Our Lady of Fatima Fatima Movement of Priests Consecration and Entrustment to Mary First Saturday's Devotion 
The Miracle of Our Lady of Fatima 1952 feature film Ponte Vedra Apparitions Rosary and Scapular Apostolic Exhortation Signum Magnum Sanctuary of Christ the King Blessed Mary of the Divine Heart Blessed Alexandrina of Balazar References Footnotes Bibliography External links Sanctuary of Fatima — Online Transmissions Pilgrims of Fatima — Official Website Fatima in Sister Lucia's Own Words — PDF, free online version of the book Official Vatican Statement Releasing the Message of Fatima Portugal in 150 Seconds, Fatima Video Documentary DeMarkey, John 1952. The True Story of Fatima. Eternal Word Television Network. St. Paul II, Minnesota, Catechetical Guild Educational Society, contains first-person accounts, including those of newspaper reporters and the children themselves. Our Lady of Fatima on IMDb 1997 film released in Italy and Portugal. United Nations Pilgrim Statue of Our Lady of Fatima. High Resolution Image of Our Lady of Fatima. Our Lady of Fatima International Tour for Peace